This might look like a normal weed whacker, but it's actually a steam engine. Well, once you take away almost all the parts. And though I wouldn't say that getting it to work was easy, it is rather simple once you understand it. You see, I recently built the minecart from Minecraft. And while I haven't found the real life ender dragon just yet, I did find a bunch of comments saying that I should build the furnace cart too. But how is that different from this? Well, my original design rode on miniature train tracks at an amusement park and was powered by an electric motor. I did this because in Minecraft, the minecart is moved by special rails that are powered by redstone, which is kind of like Minecraft's version of electricity. Since I couldn't build electric rails, I figured that a battery and an electric motor was a close enough interpretation. But not for the furnace cart. When you put a furnace into a minecart and then put coal into that furnace, it rides along at a slower pace without the need for powered rails. So somehow, the heat it generates from burning stuff gets turned into mechanical energy. And that means it's gotta be a rocket, right? While a rocket is an exciting way to convert fire into motion, I'm guessing that Mojang was thinking of something a little more conventional. But can you think of anything that's powered by coal, and rides on rails, and has been around long enough to be considered conventional? Like a train? Oh, yeah. Steam engines. That makes sense. I think you get it now. If I'm ever gonna make a furnace cart, I've got to learn about steam engines. But I mean, it's steam. You know, the stuff that comes out of your pot when making macaroni? How's that supposed to move anything but, well, noodles? Well, as you can see from this footage of a malfunctioning pressure cooker, steam gets most of its power from being trapped. Now imagine if, instead of blowing up in all directions, you force that steam pressure to blow up in just one direction. Not the band. That is the power of steam engines, where pistons are pushed back and forth by steam pressure, like in this mini steam engine 3D printed by the YouTuber Integza. The way that it works is simple. When the steam is let into the left side of the chamber, it pushes the piston to the right. Then the steam is let into the right side of the chamber, pushing the piston back to the left. The linear motion is translated into rotational motion by the crankshaft, which can then be used to spin the wheels on a train, or the conveyor belts in a factory, or the paddle on a steamboat. The steam engine dominated much of the transportation industry in the 19th century, until it began to be displaced by the internal combustion engine in the 20th century, which became so common that there are literally stacks of them at my local resale shop. I bought one for $15. And I did it because, like I said in the beginning, once you tear it down to its basic components, it's incredibly similar to a steam engine. So similar that we can convert it to runoff of steam with only a few simple parts. Wait a second, Joel. I see one major problem with your idea. You see, my steam engine pushed the piston in both directions, but your gas engine only pushes the piston in one direction. Well, you're right. The gas engine only creates pressure when the piston reaches the top. That's when the gasoline is mixed with the air in the chamber, and then the spark plug causes it to explode, forcing the piston down. But it releases the exhaust pressure when it reaches the bottom, at which point the spinning crankshaft causes it to come right back up and do it all again. So what you're saying is that you're gonna have half of a steam engine. Will that work? If we can inject the steam pressure at just the right moment, it will push the piston down in the same way. Then if there's enough momentum in the flywheel, it will release the steam pressure out the exhaust and then the crankshaft will cause it to come right back up to the top and do it all over again. This is actually called a single acting steam engine. Sounds like everything needs to be perfectly balanced. Just like your sponsor. And Tegza, right now they want to see the engine in action. And I hear about the sponsor. Yeah, but if you don't do it, then you can't pay for your projects and you have to shut down your channel. And that would suck. Point taken. Today's video is sponsored by Truebill. Truebill is an all-in-one personal finance app that helps you to save more and spend less. Having a balanced budget has been central to our financial planning for years. Without it, there's no way that my wife and I would have been able to get to where we are today. So having something like Truebill in your pocket is critical for achieving your financial goals. Now some of the things that they do you might already expect, like tracking your earning and spending in one convenient place, or creating smart savings accounts that automatically save for you. But what you might not expect is that Truebill can recognize unwanted subscriptions and then can cancel them for you with just a tap. Truebill can negotiate with people like cable companies or credit card companies to get you lower rates on your bills. Truebill can even monitor your credit score, notify you of important changes, and offer insights on how to improve it. We've spent no small amount of time doing many of these things ourselves for the last few years. So believe me when I say it's definitely worth it to get the benefit without the time commitment and without the hassle. So download the app for free by going to truebill.com slash joelcreates or by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks, Truebill.
To get our steam engine to do the spinny spinny dance, we need to fill it with explosive steam pressure at just the right time, and that means we need a switch. Just like the light switch on your wall, it will allow us to turn the power on and off, but by sending steam to the engine instead of electricity to a light. And all with the touch of a finger. Except in this case, we need a finger that can move really really fast at exactly the right time without being destroyed. So let's make this finger out of metal. The finger is an extension of the piston. You see, when we removed the spark plug, we exposed the perfect place to inject steam pressure and to access the up and down motion of the piston. By placing our metal finger through the hole, it moves up and down with the piston. When it reaches the top of its stroke, it will push the check valve switch open, allowing steam pressure to fill the chamber and shoot the piston down, and somehow this stupidly simple system worked. Decently. For one thing, I hadn't built a boiler just yet, and it was running off of my air compressor. It was a bit sluggish unless I cranked the pressure up over 100 psi, and it didn't have enough torque to put up much of a fight against my hand stopping it. When I ran it up near my compressor limit of 150 psi, it vibrated so aggressively that it broke free from the clamp. You see, as a piston is thrown to one side of the engine, there is a counterweight on the crankshaft that helps to balance out the vibration, and our metal finger just threw that balance way off. Now, I see two main options to solve this problem. One is to lighten up the finger, and the other is to change from a mechanical switch to an electrical switch. So, I went ahead and ordered materials for both. To replace the metal finger, I needed a material that could handle pressure and heat and wet, and I bought some titanium. It's, I just bought titanium. Yeah, cutting titanium was an interesting experience to say the least. The sparks can be quite... sparky. Although this was much lighter than my first finger, I think that the shaft diameter was too large and it restricted the flow of pressure too much. And at this point, I was ready to move on, because I don't think that a design with metal banging against metal is going to last that long. I mean, look at how smooshed our check valve got after only a few minutes of runtime. So what if there was a switch that was turned on by a finger that has no weight, and you can't even see it? This is called a reed switch, and it's turned on by a magnetic field. You see, the flywheel on our weed whacker already has a magnet built into it, which was used to induce the spark voltage for the spark plug. Not only does the reed switch solve our vibration problems, but by changing the number of switches and their location around the motor, we have far more control over the timing and duration of the steam injection. The reed switches turn a solenoid valve on and off. I initially stole one off of my web shooter, but it was too restrictive of the flow, so I ended up using one from a coffee maker that was designed to handle the steam temperatures. Because it was a three-way valve, the pressure comes out of the silver nozzle when not turned on. So I tried routing that pressure underneath the piston to try and create a double-acting steam engine, but I found no perceivable effect on speed, and even found that plugging the extra output negatively affected performance. This may have been because the solenoid was meant to run at 120 volts AC, not the 24 to 36 volts DC that I was throwing at it. By the way, accidentally shorting out 36 volts isn't very fun or safe. Though imperfect, this setup worked well enough that I was ready to add the final component, steam. To ensure that I didn't accidentally create a dangerous steam explosion, I needed a simple metal container strong enough to safely handle up to 200 psi while being heated to several hundred degrees. And that's what this CO2 tank is for. The tank was made of sturdy steel and normally sits around 800 psi. I removed as much paint as possible, partially filled the tank with water, then I added a safety valve designed to release the pressure should it exceed 200 psi, as well as a pressure gauge so that I could monitor the internal pressure. To heat the tank, I stuck it into a rotisserie heater from Goodwill called the George Foreman Baby George. I'm a little nervous. I don't know if this is actually gonna work. I feel like there's so many variables that if it does, I'm gonna be very pleasantly surprised. Mostly, I just wanna make sure that nothing blows up. With valves open, oven on, a tinfoil blanket, and an oven temperature probe in place, I cautiously monitored the slow rise of steam pressure. Just about at 80 PSI, and I'm getting a little bit scared. After fiddling with the third valve port and a couple of false starts, the pressure was getting crazy high. We are pushing 100. 40 psi, that's 10 bar. And that's when it all came together. <laughs> Amazingly, 
the steam engine kept running even as it reached incredibly low pressures. I can't believe that that worked. I, it seemed like it was just gonna be so finicky and it ran well, it ran really well. We are now one massive step closer to making the furnace cart a reality. But this isn't our only option for thermal power. And this steam engine could power a lot more things than just a furnace cart. My mind is swimming with possibilities. But what I really wanna know is, what do you think and what would you do? If you're wondering how I learned to build these engines, I actually found some old YouTube videos where other people did some similar conversions, and I'll link those videos below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.